Okay, this question has two parts. The first part says, you seek to design a component from a new ceramic material. You require a survival rate of 99.999% in operation. In 500,000 parts, how many will fail? Okay, we can say that the survival rate is 99.999%. Therefore, X number of components will survive out of 500,000 and times that by 100%. <clears throat> Solving for X, we find that it's equal to 499,995. Therefore, 5 fail in 500,000. Okay, the second part of the question says, you test bars of the new ceramic, um, and these have an effective area 20 times smaller than the component that you plan to manufacture. When you test these bars, you find that they have an average bend strength of 400 megapascals, and the Weibull modulus is 15.7. Therefore, the question then asks, what stress should you design for as an engineer to ensure 99.999% survival rate of components? Well, when we use the Weibull equation, the Weibull equation is written as follows. Natural log of the natural log of 1 over the quantity of 1 minus f is equal to m, the Weibull modulus, times the natural log of the stress at which something fails, minus m, the Weibull modulus, times the natural log of our characteristic stress. So, <clears throat> in this question, we want to figure out the stress at which something's failing. We can calculate f from our failure rate, and we know why the modulus. So what we don't know is this characteristic strength, but they do give us some information that allows us to calculate it. We are told that the average stress, the average bend strength is 400 MPa. Well, average implies something. Average implies that half of your samples fail, right? Half of it fail above, half of it fail below. Therefore, we can set f equal to one half. So let's go ahead and do so. Now we have the natural log of the natural log of 1 over 1 minus 1 half is equal to 15.7 times the natural log of our failure stress, 400 megapascals, minus the Weibull modulus times the natural log of our characteristic strength. When we go ahead and solve for our characteristic strength, or stress, it's equal then to 409 0.45 megapascals. Now that we know that, we can go ahead and plot what the Weibull distribution is in terms of failure, and that's what we've done right here. In this plot on Wolfram Alpha, what I'm doing is I'm plotting 1 minus the exponential of negative stress divided by the characteristic stress raised to the Weibull modulus. And you see here on the y-axis, this represents failure probability. So 0 means nothing fails, 1 means everything fails. And as you increase in stress, this is plotted in uh, megapascals, by the time that you reach around, I don't know, 460 or so, you have almost all of your samples failing. And below, say, 300 megapascals, you have very, very, very few samples failing. But it does not equal to 0. It is above 0 along here. It's just a very small number. So now that we have this characteristic strength, we can go ahead and figure out what will be the stress corresponding to 99.999% survival rate. Well, in that case, the failure rate is equal to five samples, or five parts, out of 500,000. And that's equal to 1 times 10 to the negative fifth. So let's do this again. Let's say natural log of natural log of 1 over the quantity of 1 minus 1 times 10 to the negative fifth. That's equal to 15.7 multiplied by the natural log of the failure stress, which we're going to solve for, minus 15.7, our Weibull modulus, times the natural log of the failure, uh, sorry, the characteristic strength that we just determined, which is 409.45. So when I start to plug some things in for this, I see that this term over here is equal to negative 94.4326. This is um, 15.7 times the natural log of our failure stress. And on the left-hand side of the equation, this is all equal to negative 11.5129.
Therefore, solving for our failure stress, I find that the failure stress for this component, if this were the bars, the failure stress for bars is equal to um, 196.66 repeating megapascals. However, the question doesn't ask for what would be the strength at which uh, you would have 99.999% survival of the bars. It wants that survival rate in your components. So we need to scale from our bars to our components, but they don't have the same effective area that's under a load. In fact, we know that the area, oops, the area effective for a bar is equal to 1 20th of the effective area for a component. Now we can go ahead and write out what the stress should be for the component to have the same failure rate. The stress for a component should be equal to the stress of the bar multiplied by the area, the effective area of the bar divided by the effective area of the component. This all raised to the 1 over m. Or in other words, is equal to 196.66 repeating the area of the bar and then 20 times the area of the bar raised to the 1 over 15.7 and this is equal to 162.5 megapascals. Or in other words, even though if you were to test 500,000 bars and you were to find the, the stress at which only five of them break, that is 196.66. Since we're talking about components and these are larger, the statistical probability of having a larger flaw which causes failure increases. Therefore, we can only take it up to a smaller stress, only 162 megapascals. And that's how you use Weibull modulus in probabilistic design.